This is the 2021 Concord School District Charter Commission at-large candidates debate. I'm Tony Shinella, the editor of Concord, New Hampshire Patch. Concord, New Hampshire Patch is a news and community website. We've been around for about 10 years. Uh, I want to thank you for being with us. This debate is being sponsored by Patch as well as Concord TV and WKXL 1450 AM and 103.9 FM. They have been nice enough to broadcast and uh, put the information about this race on their website. If you missed anything during the debate, you can find the program posted on yourconcordtv.org as well as the voter's guide at the Concord New Hampshire Patch website. The rules are that each candidate will have two-minute opening and closing statements and a conversation about issues facing the Charter Commission will ensue in between. One candidate could not attend, that was Bill Ardinger. He did submit a written statement, which I will read now um, to be part of the video. Bill says, thank you for the opportunity to address this jointly sponsored debate event. Unfortunately, I'm unable to attend in person due to a previously scheduled minor surgery. My name is Bill Ardinger, and I'm running for School District Charter Commission as an at-large candidate. I am running for Charter Commission because I care deeply about our Concord Public Schools. I believe that our public schools are our most important community asset. My wife and I have lived in Concord since 1989. We raised our three children here. They all attended the Concord Public Schools. I have worked as a tax and business attorney in Concord for over 30 years. Bill also says, I have enjoyed engaging in our Concord community for many years. I've served as president and a coach of the American Little League. I coached hoops at Concord Boys and Girls Club. And I also served as chair of the Concord Community Music School. Ten years ago, I was elected to serve on the last school district charter commission. I am proud of my service on that commission, which recommended that control of the charter be transferred from the state legislature to Concord voters. Concord voters overwhelmingly approved this local control charter. I believe that the best way to ensure strong public schools is to establish a simple and clear charter document that authorizes Concord voters to elect school board members who can make informed decisions about our schools and be accountable to voters. My service on the last Charter Commission and my long experience as attorney will provide me with the necessary experience to contribute to this important review of our charter. My family has benefited greatly from being a part of the community, and I would consider it an honor to give back to it by serving on the Charter Commission. Thank you to Tony and the sponsors of the debate event for allowing my statement to be read to our viewers. Again, that was Bill Ardinger, one of five at-large Charter Commission candidates who could not attend our debate, and we're reading that as a courtesy to him. Now, let's listen to what all of the other candidates had to say. All right, Betty, first opening statement. My statement is this. My name is Betty Hoadley, and I'm running for the Charter Commission. I uh, have lived in Concord for a very long time, in fact, in the same house for a very long time. My association with the schools is long and varied. I've taught over 26 years in the Concord schools at four schools, four different schools. I was a school board member for 15 years, and I was part of the 2011 Charter Commission. In fact, I chaired it. So I think that I have a good balance between knowing the school's needs and also having worked with the uh, difficult vocabulary and contractual things that are in the uh, charter as it appears now. Yeah. And that's my opening statement. Great, thank you. Clint, we're going to go with you. My name is Clint Codswell, and uh, I've been a resident of Concord, uh, New Hampshire for 40 some years. I moved here in 1980 to become a principal uh, of Kimball School, and uh, I continued working for the district for 27 years, being the principal of Kimball, Dewey, and Walker at one time or another. Uh, after I retired, uh, I also uh, ran for the school board, was elected, and served 10 years in the Concord School Board. For those years, I was the president of the school board. I also was elected to the first charter commission. And uh, we spent uh, a lot of time trying to figure out how to write a charter that would make, that would fit uh, the legal requirements to separate our charter from the New Hampshire State Legislature, which was running our charter up at that time. 
Uh, we put in a lot of work. Uh, I was very proud of the end uh, product. The Concord School, uh, Concord community vote, voted to transfer the charter and accept it. And I'm running now to kind of look back in 10 years and see how well that charter served our community. Robert, we'll go with you. Two minute opening statement, please. 50 years ago next month, my wife Rainey and I escaped LA, heading east looking for a decent place to have a recent family. We ended up in Concord. It was an overpacked VW bus, it was an overpacked Beetle, and our party Woodstock appreciated the trip. I've had two children go through the uh, Concord School District, Heather and Rob, both adults now. Uh, I served 10 years on the city council, first as a ward counselor, then as a two-year term at large. I also served uh, on the uh, city charter commission, and I look forward to viewing this charter in terms of did the changes work? I think they have. How do we uh, reconfigure the districts in terms of the latest census data? And is there a way we can make the election of school board members consistent with off-year elections the way the city council elects its members? Thank you. And Roy. Hello, I'm Roy Schweiker. I've been in Concord about as long as all these other people, I guess, that's a fair statement. And my interest on the Charter Commission are a couple of things. Number one, the Concord City Council has been very diligent in diverting school tax money from property taxes to their tax increment financing districts. And I'd like to uh, put a requirement in the city charter, in the school charter, that uh, every time they propose this, that the school has to hold a public school hearing on this to explain the adverse effects on the school district and that the district should not respond until that public hearing has been held. And my second interest has to do with uh, buying and selling real estate. It seems that uh, last time we had a major school building project, the school board decided on their own behalf that only two bidders would be allowed to bid on the school project. And that seemed very strange, particularly if one of them suddenly got a big contract in the interim then we'd be stuck with whatever bid the other one wanted to do. So I'd like to requ require in the city and the school charter that uh, the bidding be somewhat more open and not just limited to two bidders and the requirement to consider more places. And the other thing is disposing of property. The city council recently disposed of a property for a couple million dollars less than they had invested in it, but not in any form of bidding process. The city staff secretly chose one of 17 bidders without disclosing who any of the other ones were. And once again, I'd like to see a requirement in the school charter that the school does not dispose of any real estate secretly, either does it through open bidding or open negotiation. Thank you. The first question will be for all of you. It's gonna be asked slightly different um, for, and we've got the two prior charter commission members um, over here. So that works. We'll start with them first and um, we have the two challengers who were not on the Charter Commission on before. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna ask the question in a way where I'm gonna ask you to comment on what you think and then comment on what you think based on what they did, okay? So um, we'll go with Clint first this time and then we'll go with Betty and then we'll go with Roy and Bob. So uh, Clint, you were on the first district commission, uh, the, the, the pulling out of the legislature. Yes. There were only two chain, major changes that came from that taking the charter out of the hands of the legislature and um, electing the district school board, uh, elect, electing some school board members by district. In hindsight, do you think that the commission should have look, looked at other things or did you think that, that, that those two reforms were enough? Well, it, it, uh, those were the reforms that uh, as a group of nine people uh, we talked about and we felt that it was, uh, uh, you know, there was a lot of argument and discussion about ward voting. Uh, and it was, it came down to a very close vote, but I think in hindsight, it ended up working to some extent. I can't tell you for sure how well it worked because I've never really did any in-depth research, but people I asked say that it seems to work for them. Um, 
I, I think just like this thing we're having here, some wards seem to have, have more people involved than others. And I, I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, the charter seems to have worked uh, with just the minor changes that we put in there. We've got um, avenues for adjusting the charter. Every 10 years, we have a revision or a revised charter commission to look at what has, needs changing and what doesn't need changing. I know there'll be some minor issues that need to be changed, uh, but you know I don't know that until we get into the meeting. How well did we do? Um, quite frankly, I was pretty pleased with it. I was also pleased that we got a certain amount of unanimity, although there were some people who weren't fully committed to it. They did say that they would not get in the way of the vote. Um, I'm a researcher, and uh, I've done quite a bit of research already on the effectiveness or my perception of the effectiveness of district voting. And if I were to become uh, a member of the new Charter Commission, I would uh, have that material available for those people. Your original question, though, was we only had two questions on the ballot, but we did ever so much more work than that. There was all kinds of work about elections. There was all kinds of work about the amendments. There was uh, ideas of how to sync with other uh, agencies and, and places that were uh, sync uh, with, with whom we should be synced. And therefore, I, I felt that the work that was done was um, um, really pretty busy. We were busy people. We were meeting every other week for quite a few months. We met the deadlines and we presented two major questions to the voting public. And I think that we, this year, should be thinking about working off from that. In other words, there may be some compelling issues now that need to have our attention. After all, in 10 years, things can change quite a bit. Same questions for both of you, only the other way around. Um, you were at either at meetings or read about the stories that happened with the Charter Commission. What do you think of the first of, of the first reforms and uh, the work that they did? I think they did an outstanding job. I think that the two things they proposed passed, so apparently people agreed with them. So I'm not looking to change that in any way. On the other hand, in a way, this is the ordinary people's chance to vote on amendments. So. I would like to say, okay, we'll open it up to more amendments. I, if I was on the commission, I would tend to approve anything that wasn't unreasonable, not just whether I would vote for it, but to put it on the ballot and let the people decide. So it don't become entirely unwieldy. I wouldn't mind if it was half a dozen different changes on the ballot. And I've already mentioned that I'd like to do something about the you know, buying and selling real estate, and I'd like to do something about the TIF districts. Thank you. <clears throat> I think they got it right because a ward representation wouldn't work the district because you have two wards that are split between the Concord School District and the Mary Family School District. So that would present a problem. I think going to, uh, I call it lotorials, but we have multiple wards voting work. I don't see any change to that. I'd like to keep it going. Uh, Roy has an interest in the TIP district, and the good news is there is legislation being proposed that would give the school districts, Concord and Merrimack Valley, a bigger say in that. Personally, I think it's an abuse of power to steal money from school districts and the county government to fund pet projects of the city. And what happens now, you have the Sears block and the lumber yard districts, mission accomplished, ended. They've extended it for store street extension, which is a travesty. I'll go into that later, but it's, it's, uh, it robs money going to a school district that needs the money to fund educational resources. Thank you. And we'll start with you and Bob this time. Um, 
During the campaign 10 years ago, uh, when there were two charter questions, the first one was pulling it from the, from the legislature, and the second one was uh, to create districts. There were some members of the community who were directly connected with the school district who launched an effort to stop the reform on the district seats. And in fact, um, the district seats were only approved by the voters in, in Concord by about 35 or 36 votes. It was very, very close. Um, were you surprised that there were people who wanted to stop that in hindsight? Absolutely. You have to go back to the 60s and why the voters in Pentecook opted to form their own district rather than merge with Concord. And they felt, rightly or wrongly, that too many special interest groups controlled the school, the school board. Going to districts ended that perception. So I was wholly supportive of going to the district and ending the at-large, which really put candidates at a disadvantage. It's much easier to run from a, a smaller base than this to a city at large, when uh, in certain cases, when you're running in a general election, when you're overwhelmed by media, partisan media, you can't get your message through. So uh, I was disappointed the vote wasn't higher for going to the districts. I guess I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I was not the least bit surprised that a lot of the school board members tried to get involved in the process because, you know, that's one of the problems that I see. The school board sometimes does irrational things beyond their, you know, purview, shall we say, and that's one reason I want this real estate amendment to keep them from doing things like allowing only two bidders on the school because some of the school board members do strange things. So, you know, I hadn't expected it, but in retrospect, I'm not surprised. And I'm glad, I'm glad that the district won. We had a similar thing with the city charter, if you remember, whether we were going to have a strong or weak mayor. And everybody on the charter commission favored the weak mayor, but they allowed the thing to come to a vote because they thought that was only fair for the public. And the public voted, you know, very close for the strong mayor, even though the charter commission was against it. And that's what I see as, you know, a good thing. The charter commission says our job is to propose things but it's up to the voters to decide. So I'm gonna, you know, be hindered to do that and help propose what we think the voters should have a say on and then let them decide for us. Clint, were you surprised that there was an, uh, there, there was an effort to try and stop the one reform? I mean, the one reform that you had, yeah. you know, the, the, everybody wanted it away from the legislature. That was an issue. You got one reform. The one reform was to have the district seats and- I, I uh... Uh, was in two roles at that time. I was on the school board at the time that I was on the Charter Commission. And uh, watching the process that went through, uh, I thought we were well represented on that Charter Commission, and this is, the, this is what we came up with. Yeah, I, I was kind of surprised that anybody, you know, if you were there or speaking to the, to the you know, putting your point to the to group, then I would understand that. But to do it outside of that, I, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't uh, impressed at all. And I know too, Betty, that, um, and I remember, because I think I attended most of the meetings, if not all of them, um, that was a compromise that was, everybody worked on really hard to get that compromise done. Yes, uh, there was a compromise. And um, that's the beauty of a democracy, that you can work these things out. But it was difficult, I don't mind telling you. One of the things that made it difficult, in my opinion, was the fact that the person who uh, had this idea and promoted it uh, in such a strong fashion happened to be a municipal lawyer and highly connected to the city mayoral position. And so it, it looked like there was going to be sort of a fight between the municipal aspect and the school. And so we were walking on thin ice as we tried to maneuver our way down through. There are a good many arguments why district voting isn't the best thing in the world. Uh, for one thing, I think that it makes it easier for the candidate to uh, just have a couple of people in their ward. And it's, and it's a small race and you're not putting yourself out uh, before seven or nine or 11 possible school board members. 
uh, candidates. We've had that many before. Uh, the argument was that it was cheaper uh, to run a race. It was easier to get out to the neighborhood. And other people were saying, but you don't understand that we have ways of communicating now that people haven't always had. And so your audience and your friends and your voters may be all around the city and you might want them from other wards. We had every argument in the world, over here, over here, over here, over here. And I'll tell you, when I went home those nights, I wanted to sit down and have a cold tea and a cookie because it was difficult to get through there. We finally worked it out. There would be three year cycle and the very first year was at large, and then the next two years would be at the district. So considering the times and considering the uh, argumentation on each side, I thought we reached a reasonable conclusion and a negotiation. However, I've been doing something like I used to do in college. Do you remember when you were going to have a big test? The thing that you did was you sat there and you tried to figure out what the questions are gonna be. You would meet with other people. And so I have already sat down and figured out what things I think are going to come to this and whether I come and attend meetings as simply a voter or as I'm here sitting in one of these chairs, it doesn't matter. But I'm guessing that we're gonna bring up this district voting issue again. It's not over. Some members of the Concord Education Association have privately raised concerns about having the Charter Commission at all, uh, believing that somehow city voters will want the right to be able to not approve contracts like they do in Penacook and every other city and town in the state, either by town meeting or by oversight of a city council. Um, they, they, they fear that the voters will tinker with, with their contracts, whereas now they negotiate with the school district and it gets approved by the board members and then they move on. So Betty, why shouldn't Concord District, Concord School District residents have the same rights as Penacook parents and nearly every other parent in the state to have the ability to have that role in deciding whether or not a, a, a this, the CEA contract is approved? Having been a member of CEA for a number of years, you pose an interesting question, but I will tell you the reason I was a CEA member was for the insurance that it gave me and the support it would give me. There were a lot of things that happened in CEA of which I was not a part. For example, if I got a piece of literature that told me how to vote, do you think that was gonna fly at my house? <laughs> not really. And so sometimes I question the judgment and the motivation of our own unions, not just CEA, but any union. They're out for themselves, that's why they band together. And so I really don't feel like I can comment in a very fair way about the feelings that CEA people may have here in, in the Concord Public Schools. And I would go one step further to say, I think there's an appalling lack of understanding of what the charter is uh, and, uh, I don't blame anyone. I didn't know what it was 12 years ago. I had no clue. And then, you know, gradually I learned about it and ended up being on the Charter Commission. But it, it's sort of a, uh, I, I hate to say in the closet, but it's something that's sort of over to the side somewhere. And people don't really understand what it is, how it can be changed, and if it should be changed. So I don't have a really good answer for that because there are just too many variables, too many moving parts. Working at a, on the board for 10 years and negotiating with the unions, uh, I, I'm going to guess there's 15 plus unions in the Concord school. And if we started having the people vote on all of the contracts in the school, uh, then of course, if we're going to do that, then we've got to vote on the contracts for the city, uh, which I don't know how many unions they have. I, you know, all I see is chaos. Uh, when we have a system that's working, I, I'm in no way going to change it or want to change it. Uh, the CEA, uh, I've negotiated with them. Sometimes they've really, uh, I won't say, well, yeah, I will. It pissed me off. But the. Uh, We're not on TV. We're on yeah, video. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I support them in a lot of issues. So, so that's just the way it is. That's what negotiation is all about. 
And whenever we are negotiating, it always get, he gets heated. Before I go to the, I wanted just to, because you're specific, in Salem and Merrimack, which are only slightly smaller than Concord, the voters there don't have seem to have any issue with being able to vote on every contract. So what what you know you said, hey, it's chaos. But voters voters in Merrimack and Salem have two or three page ballots and are able to vote on every contract. Every contract. Yeah, at town at, at their the at their. Too. Yep. So I mean, and you make a good point about well, they're not able to do it with the city either. But I mean, it's it, it, what makes Concord voters. Any, well, I mean, Pennacook voters get to vote on all theirs yeah. too. Well. Uh, I'm not voting for that a change on the charter, and, yep. and I'd, I'd be not even close to for that such an issue. Okay, it may work someplace, but I, I think it would be chaos. Go with Bob. Same question. What a novel idea! It seems to work in the Merrimack uh, Valley School District. Would it work here? I don't know. It's not an issue that I've heard of, and I'm not willing to bring it up but I'm willing to listen to it. Uh, if it works, and if Concord School District is the only totally autonomous district in the state, every other district, they either answer the voters or as in Manchester, they answer the uh, mayor and voter Alderman. Uh, so I'm willing to listen, but it's not an issue that really gets me uh, uh, energized to pursue it. I want to just follow up with Clint. Do you think the do you think the city voters should have the opportunity to vote on city contracts too? Well, <clears throat> don't get me going on city issues. Yeah, no. I, <laughs> but I want to be fair, though. He made a relevant point. Maybe you know. Well, look at what the city council recently did with the manager's salary. It came through as a consent item. There was no public disclosure as to what it was, and they. They had no discussion, and they just voted it through. As it now appears, the city manager of Concord is paid more than the governor, paid more than the mayor of Manchester, paid more than our two congressional representatives, paid more than our two senators. And, and, and the public has no say in the matter. Uh, that's what you get. Uh, as I said, I'm not looking forward to springboarding that there are other issues that have my attention that's not really one of them right now i think that uh it's an interesting concept but i'm not sure how workable it is the issue we have right now is a very small percentage of people actually vote in the school board elections i think it's like 15 percent of the voters actually vote for the school board and it's not surprising that the people tend to show up and vote you know, maybe teachers union members, and maybe PTA members, people that want a quality education and don't, you know, care how much you spend. So that's why the school budget looks large. But let's say you allow people to vote on the contracts. Are there going to be the same people that show up and vote on them? Now, I don't see how this is, you know, going to change things. If there's really a silent majority of people that think the school budget is too large, number one, they should show up and vote, and vote for school board members that don't spend as much. Number two, they should vote for my charter amendment on the fifth district to keep the city devoting the tax dollars to, to their development projects. We're going to start with Roy with this question. We're going to ask everybody the same question. Um, <clears throat> and, and it comes back to something that Bob said. Not only is the school district the only autonomous school district in the state, it's actually one of the only in the country, it turns out, um, that's, built, that's structured this way. Um, and the city has a weak mayor and a strong city manager. Um, makes it actually do and having a village in a in a second I mean this is unusual it's like not like anywhere else in the world or in the country excuse me um, <clears throat> but I'd like to get some up and down thoughts on um, things that would be included in in as for charter proposals but and, and might be brought by residents or not so um, We'll take these one, um, actually, let me, I'll just record this for audio and not for video, but because I want to move through a bunch of them, okay? So um, we'll go with Roy first. Should the city council have any oversight over the Concord school budget? Well, as you say, there's a problem there because the Concord city council is elected in part by different voters in the school district, so I don't see how you can make that work reasonably. That's going to be the dumbest idea I've heard in a long time. 
And the simple reason is the city council can't control a, bureaucrat a bureaucratically bloated city budget. And the thought of having the school district budget interface with the city council, what a nightmare. They can't control their own destiny or don't want to. I mostly agree. <laughs> I agree too. And <clears throat> I feel like the city council doesn't want it anyway. Um, Betty, should school board members be paid? Which would something? Which is something that it, it'd be paid like a salary? Are you, are you doing a little nuanced thing between a stipend and a, and a payment? Yes. Well, how much are you talking about? I don't know. Anything? No, there's an element. There's an element of volunteerism uh, with being a school board member. Uh, there were some school board members, unfortunately, when I was on the school board, would come in and they'd open up their packet right then. I'd been studying mine for two hours. Now, it's the same thing with the kids in school. You know, some are diligent and do things and others just wing it. And so uh, I'm not sure that you would accomplish much and all you do is create hard feelings. A better method is to have a stipend. And, and, and the rest of the way is your own good heart and your own taking time to do the job right. In fairness to some of our younger school board members, though, you were both retired when you had two hours to read over your packet, though. Mm -hmm. When you were on the school board, you were retired, weren't you? You were working yes, at UNH. Yes. It's, oh, no, that was You were doing work with UNH. And, I retired in June and took my seat as a school board member in January, yes. <laughs> I, I, I had seven months of... Uh, uh, in fairness to the younger board members, sometimes they're a little rushed. That's, I was just being, I was being... I'm not gonna get into that. Okay, all right. All I know is what I did was right. Yes. Um, <clears throat> the stipend now of $1,000 for city council and school board members. Uh, you know, it, when you're talking about changing things, you gotta say, why? It, it, we've gotten wonderful people who run for school board. We've gotten wonderful people who run for city council. And I, I think the, the voluntary aspect of it all is, is something that is really nice for Concord. I think there's good feelings between people who hold office and people who, who don't or vote for them. So I'm good with what we have. Well, as I understand it, the school board is tied into the city council and whatever the city councilors get, the school board members get. That is true. Okay. And quite basically, when I was on the city council, if all I spent was two hours before a meeting, I failed. It was a very much complicated issues, and I really studied it, so I did my homework. Uh, should both get more? Probably yes. Is it politically expedient to do that? Probably no. Uh, I, I think, for someone to run for council or school board has a definite volunteerism aspect to it. And I would hate to see it become uh, professionalized. I know when my father was on the school board, he was even more extreme than uh, Betty. He said that they used to hand deliver the packets on Friday, they didn't have the electronic packets in those days. And he'd spend the whole weekend looking at it and then He'd come into the school board meeting on Monday and got some of the young members just opened up for the first time, look at it, and then throw it in trash on the way out. Whereas, of course, he'd bring his home and you know, probably still have them in a closet somewhere, you know, you know, to refer to later if something came up again. So, you know, there are definitely people that work harder, people that work less hard, and I think that's up to the voters to decide. You know, if somebody isn't working hard enough, don't reelect them again. But as far as a salary, you know. I don't think you can pay enough, you know, to get someone to put in a lot of time on it because they have to quit their regular job and I don't think anyone's talking about $40,000 a year salary, but at the same time, you know, giving them a little bit of something, you know, so they can tell their spouse, gee, honey, I'm sorry I have to spend so much time on this school board packet that we have a $1,000 we can take a weekend away somewhere, well, you know, maybe that works. I've been asking all of the candidates this question. I don't know this woman named Carissa Cora, who's the owner of Educating for Good, but she recently made a really compelling case, I thought, in the paper about um, merging the Merrimack Valley School District with the Concord School District. And um, <clears throat> she made a couple of points and then she missed a couple of points. 
you have this issue with the Pennacook tax rate being much different than ours. Um, and and it's, it's astronomically different. It's like seven or eight dollars per thousand. Um, you have the TIF districts, which you've already mentioned, and 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 the pullout and the uh, the people being upset with what's going on at Exit 17. But there's also the it, there's also the issue that what she didn't bring up, which is Salisbury. Many Salisbury, Bosquin, Webster parents are really upset about their high property taxes and have been for a long time and and want to go into a cheaper school system especially if their kids are always going to be bussed you know from from over here to over there they can easily get bussed to franklin and have it be a lot less expensive on them and the fourth thing is um the the, the gorilla in the room again with this that 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 you may not realize that's over this race but it was over the previous Charter Commission race, which was the consolidation of elementary schools. We now have a middle school that's being priced somewhere between 68 and $80 million that would not be needed if we had access in this school district to um, the Merrimack Valley Middle School and the Merrimack Valley High School and or those smaller towns or some of those smaller towns moving into regional school districts with Pittsfield and Franklin. So the, the question is, um, but you can't do that, any of that, if you don't approve of a change to the charter, which allows someone to make a proposal to say, I'm directing, I, I wanna have an initiative petition by which I direct this school board to work with that school board to bring the city together. So you'd have to have the mechanism by which you do not have now which is an initiative petition mechanism. You could keep the 60 and six, the super majority, or you can even revise super majority amounts, but you still have to have the ability to have that initiative petition. So the question is kind of open-ended. Um, that is a proposal that could, could come to be that a lot of people want looked at, would save us tens of millions of dollars on, new, on a new school building that some people think we don't need, since a third of it's only 35 years old, um, and it would heal, the, it would bring the city together. But you can't do that unless anybody who's on the Charter Commission creates the process by which an ordinary person like Carissa could propose that. Do you have any thoughts about that, Roy? Yes. First off, I think that you are making a peculiar assumption, which is that people only want a new runlet because there's not enough space. I think the secret is. They feel like the building is worn out and they want a new fancy building and they aren't going to think that taking over the Merrimack Valley Middle School is the solution to having a fancy new building. So I don't think that's the issue. I think some of the people in the Pentecook section of Concord are upset that they think maybe their district isn't quite as good and they're paying higher taxes for it. And I think that may be an issue. And I think that once again, some of the smaller communities feel like they're paying too much and you could do better elsewhere. And they may be correct. The problem is, I don't know how thoroughly some of you people know the rules about dissolving consolidated school districts, but it's essentially designed to make it impossible to do it. As in, if you leave the school district, the district gets to keep all the assets, including the elementary school in your town, but you still have to pay your share of the bonds, even though you've left the district. So this is something that can't be done by a bunch of citizens writing a petition and sending it to the Concord School Board You've got to go through the legislature to change the dissolution of the districts. And I think that right now, am I correct, that the school board has an opportunity to propose charter amendments. And if they're not in favor of it, it doesn't matter if the individuals propose one. So I think that if they want to do it, they need to, the school board needs to get behind it because it won't happen unless they are. So I'm, so I'm not proposing a dissolution, I'm proposing a merger, which would be similar to what happened in Franklin when Hill left the Franklin School District. They were able to do it in less than three years and they joined Winnesquam and it didn't take legislative approval. All they, all they were able to do was to, to leave the district and it was a mutual thing, so that helps. But if you have nine school board members that don't want to merge and you have people in Concord who say, we don't want to spend $80 million for a middle school, and people in Pentecook who say, we'd like to go to 26 instead of 35, um, they would, you know, if, if thousands of people signed a petition, like in every other community in the state, 
they would direct the school board members where they would have to say, well, look, everybody really wants us to work on this. We should probably think about it. I'm, I guess what I'll say is what I said before. If people want to come up with a reasonable proposal in this, I'm willing to put it on the ballot and let people see if they're in favor of it. But I'm not sure I could support something like that. It sounds too complicated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. You really got some great questions. Uh, I have to credit Carissa. So that was hers. Well, first of all, she I'm, she she brought that up, and I hadn't even thought of it until I read her I'm column. Totally against public referenda. I've seen too many outside groups come in and buy a vote. So from that part, I don't like. Uh, my view of the Charter Commission: it's there to encourage good governance. The school board is a policy drive board and article 9 dictates how they determine their policy so if it were, were to go into fruition to look at to me the school board would be the one to create a study group to report back to the school board as to what direction they should go in in terms of the charter commission I don't see part of our turf at all. Uh, and, and as Roy pointed out, and there's so many convolutions to the possibilities. Uh, uh, I just assume the Charter Commission focus in on its governance and the school board focus on its policy. And if it were come to play, that the school board had interest in such a concept they would pursue it and go back to the voters so any but let me just and before i shift real quick so that again to follow follow up though so that so in your belief the citizen of the community has no way of pushing the school board members to act in such a way in this case beyond electing new school board members no they have the right to petition the school board but the school board has the right to understand what they're being petitioned to do yep. and to fully go through that process. Got it. Thank you. Clint, thank you. Right. I, it's such a complex question. Uh, and you threw in so many things about Runlet, which I know you're not a big fan of moving it to a new building. But um, we, we negotiated a contract with Deerfield, which we have in place right now, and they send their high school students to look at that. And we've gone in negotiations with other communities about sending their students. You know, it, it, we, we figured out Pittsfield, uh, we talked to them. If they were paying like $29,000 a student to educate them, we were going to charge them 18000 Ten thousand dollars a student, but they're so that's such a tight community that they didn't want to do it. But it's a thought, you know. And we would have taken all of the Pittsfield kids in our schools. I don't know contractually how you do that. I know at Deer, Deerfield we just we had a contract with them, and I don't know what hoops we had to go through to get that initial contract. We used to have a contract with Bow, uh, and, and we left that go, but. Uh, you know, I, I don't know the solution to this, what you're talking about. I just don't see it happening, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, it's an interesting question, <clears throat> but I'm not sure why we're even talking about it. It's not anything that's going to come before this Charter Commission is about to be. I'm in sympathy with Merrimack Valley um, parents whose kids go to Merrimack Valley schools and they pay such high taxes. But their problem is with the city, it's not with us. The Concord School District has no, no, no dog in this fight. There's nothing that promotes them to bring this forward. Now, you raise the question about middle school. That's all conjecture. There's an awful lot of, there's a lot of water to go over to the dam. And you can tell that you've got me riled up with this question <laughs> because quite frankly, I, I don't think it's, we should even be talking about it because it's not gonna happen. It's not going to come before this Charter Commission. Okay. 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 Yes, ma'am. When ma you're part of the aggrieved group, you're going to go knock on any door you see. You're going to try anything you can. And it is not the job 
of the Concord Charter Commission to make her life simpler or to give in to something. You know, the next thing, are we going to entertain a petition from St. Johnsbury, Vermont? I know they're just next door, but it, our job is to take care of the Concord school system. Okay. So, Roy, you have two minutes closing statements. Well, I guess I've been very impressed with these other three candidates. If they happen to get elected, that'll be fine. I'll show up and make sure they propose my proposals. That'll be great. But uh, I'd be happy to do it. I got the time. And I have things I want to push, so that's why I ran for this thing. And may the best people win. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. Bob? I want to address uh, Roy's concerns about TIP districts. Namely, there is proposed legislation in that will grant school districts, Concord and, Pen and Merrimack Valley, and the county a say in dividing up and what percentage. Uh, I want to go a step further, and I may be starting a petition drive so that the this, this city can do whatever it damn well pleases in its TIF districts with their own revenue only and not touch base on the school districts. Because what they're doing is they're, 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 they're stealing our revenue. The school districts both need that revenue to support the education of our kids and it's being stolen by the city. And I think that's fundamentally wrong. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, other than that, uh, I look forward to serving on the Charter Commission. Uh, I served on the city's Charter Commission, and I view it as an issue of governance, not policy. If you have a, a policy disagreement, then you need to take that disagreement up with whoever's running for school board. That should be your venue on a policy issue. We're not going to be a policy-making body. We're going to be laser-focused on how we can improve governance in the school district. Thank you. Um, I've had three of my children and one of my grandchildren go through the Concord school system. I've worked for the system. Um, it has been wonderful to me, and this community has been wonderful to me. I feel very honored to have the opportunity to represent this community in any way I can. Uh, I will say that I want, I read Roy's article in the paper, and uh, I, and you too, uh, you're talking about the TIF thing. I, I'd like to know more about that because if there's a chance in this charter to address that issue, that would be pretty interesting, but I don't know enough about it. And Roy, if I'm on, you show up, or if I, you're on, I'll show up and listen to what you have to say. Thanks. I've learned a lot tonight, and is there another tool to learn something? I think what I bring to this job and my candidacy is that I have experience in the schools. I'm a researcher. I care very much about accurate data. I want to make data-driven decisions. I don't want to have something anecdotal or something that, you know, there's just a myth out there and people believe it's true. And then I offer one more thing, a little bit of fire in the, in, in, the, in the head and in the body, a little more. I'm a redhead and I will not give up a fight if a fight is called for. So you know darn well that if you uh, do elect me, it's my swan song, if you do elect me, I will bring two things to it, good, good data, good decision-making, and at the same time, a certain amount of passion for the job that we are supposed to be doing. Oh, and I don't want a stipend. <laughs> I have one more comment, Tony. I don't know if you've learned, I know you haven't learned before, but you don't mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the at-large Concord School District Charter Commission candidates who have told you all about why they are running. They're running citywide, except for Merrimack Valley School District voters in Penacook. Uh, the polls are open in Concord from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Tuesday, November 2nd. There are plenty of competitive races. Make sure you go out and vote. If you don't know where you're voting, 
Check out the Voter's Guide at the Concord, New Hampshire patch site or go to yourconcordtv.org as well as the city's website for information about voting. I'm Tony Shinella. Thank you again for being with us.